Dave Dorman from Station 103. And I'm Derek Chapman from Fire Station 103. We're going to discuss with you today the recently adopted air management policy and the rules of air management. In 2013, NIOSH posted and published a report on the top five line of duty death causes. The first was inadequate or improper risk assessment, lack of incident command, lack of accountability, four, inadequate communications, and the fifth was the lack of standard operating procedures or following those standard operating procedures. The air management policy was established to provide department guidelines and procedures in regards to air management during the use of SCBAs. With the addition of the 45-minute SCBA air cylinders, the intent of this policy is to provide for increased firefighter safety. The improved capacity of the cylinders is not intended for more time inside the IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and health environment. They are designed to increase the time the firefighters have to exit the IDLH environment. This policy complies with NFPA 1404, which is the industry standard for fire service respiratory protection. SCBA shall be utilized by all personnel operating in a smoke-filled environment or environments that have the potential to become IDLH. This includes interior firefighting, vehicle fires, rubbish fires, hazmat incidents, and most importantly, during overhaul and salvage operations. At 4,500 PSI, all of the LED lights are green. As the pressure drops, the LEDs go off one at a time. At 50%, the half LED light blinks for 20 seconds and then returns to constant illumination. At 25%, the quarter LED light turns red and starts to blink. At 25%, the corresponding red LED on front of your HUD and the rear of your harness will blink red, warning others of your low air situation. Low air alarm will sound when your SCBA reaches 23 to 27% or 1035 to 1215 PSI. Remember, 1125 PSI in your bottle is for emergencies only. At 10% or 450 PSI, the quarter LED blinks faster as well as the red LED on the back of your harness and the alarm will also sound. At 200 PSI or less, the HUD will stop operating along with your alarm. The intent of this policy is to have all firefighters out of the IDLH prior to the low air alarm sounding. Notify your supervisor when you reach 50%. At this time, all team members shall begin their exit. Notify the division group supervisor or IC for the rotation of your crew. Per our policy, you must be out of the IDLH environment prior to operating within the last 25% of your air supply. If personnel work into the last 25% of their air supply and their low air alarm activates, they will be considered to have worked into their second work cycle and must report to rehab. Here are some situational awareness considerations. Once command and control starts the incident timer, the IC should consider doing a radio check for PAR and ROAM every 10 minutes. Captains must be vigilant in maintaining the status of their team's air consumption. Consider getting a baseline through drilling on your team's air consumption through hands-on drills while on air. Always have two exits. Know where they are, because sometimes the way you came in might not be the way out. What's your area, guys? Yeah. Engine 3 from engine 103. All personnel accounted for. We've got one member at 50%. We're going to start making our way to the exit. We're going to have to rotate our crew out. Train on different techniques as to how to check each other's air supply. And remember, this policy also applies to salvage and overhaul operations. Here are some considerations when using the RIC channel on an incident. The RIC channel was designed as a talkabout for RIC team members without interfering with the incident tack. During an initial RIC intel gathering, the RIC teams can utilize this RIC channel to get valuable safety information from teammate to teammate or teammates to team leader. If there's a large commercial type fire and you have multiple RIC teams, this same RIC channel can be utilized to get that same intel over the airwaves without interfering with the primary tack channel. It's important that RIC team members still scan the incident tack to keep current with fire ground operations. When there are multiple RIC teams engaged on an incident, the RIC channel is an awesome, is an awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> is an awesome. <laughs> Dude, awesome. RIC channel is awesome, bro.